Do you deal with stress, tension, and pain? In this video, I'm going to walk you through a guided somatic meditation for chronic pain. Hey, beautiful humans. I'm Suki Baxter, founder of Whole Body Revolution, where I help you to rewire yourself for greater health, happiness, and success. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified every time I release a new video so you never miss out. All of the links to anything that I mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. Let's get into it. So if you've been dealing with pain, whether it's been mild or severe for a long time, you may have noticed that pain will expand to take up your entire awareness. It's basically all you can focus on. So in this guided meditation, what we're doing is really expanding your capacity for sensory awareness. We want to open that up a little bit so that you can become aware of more experiences than just the pain experience. And this has a very calming effect on your nervous system, which will then decrease the sensitization of your nerves and decrease your pain. So I want to go ahead and start with the question that I use at the beginning of every session and that is what has your attention right now? And if you've been in pain for a while what has your attention is probably something that's pretty uncomfortable. It's probably pain and that's okay. So just bringing your awareness to your body and checking in I want you just to notice what you notice. Notice what comes up for you. And like I said, if it's that pain sensation, if it's something that's uncomfortable, that's normal and that's completely fine. So what we're gonna then do is start to expand our ability to notice things that are around us. So what I'd love to invite you to do is open your eyes if you've had them closed and just start to allow your eyes to drift around the room and just notice what draws your attention. Notice if there are maybe some colors that are really attractive, maybe some shapes that really draw your awareness, maybe there's a texture that's really attractive and allow your vision to connect to those and really linger, really land in the places where you're drawn. As long as your vision wants to be there, just let yourself soak it up. Let yourself explore and absorb the colors and the shapes and the textures that are around you. There may be something like a painting that has some really beautiful color in it or a flower that's a bright pop of color. If you're outside, there may be trees that draw your awareness or even wildlife that's very attractive. You may notice maybe the angularity of a chair that's in your in your room or whatever it is it's not important the what doesn't matter just allow your vision to be drawn and if you are indoors I invite you if you have access to a window to really let your gaze expand outside the window and look further than the confines of the room that you're in. Just noticing if there are things outside the space that you're immediately in that draw your attention. And if you are outside, notice if there are colors and textures that are quite far away, that are in your distance, that are drawing your gaze. And let yourself land on those just as much as things that are much closer, that are much nearer to you. So explore that, looking at things that are close and then letting your gaze drift to things that are further away. And as you do this, maybe notice what's going on with that sensory experience in your body. So maybe you just check in and what has your attention now in your body? And it may be exactly the same Maybe that same sensation that drew your attention at the beginning and that's totally fine or it may have shifted a little and what I want you to be aware of what's really important when it comes to pain is I've noticed a tendency for people who are dealing with pain to get really into their story around the pain there's nothing wrong with this, but 
for this practice, we really want to stay in the sensory information. So what that looks like a lot of times is that I will ask someone, what do you notice? And they'll, they'll notice some pain. And then they'll say, um, I know it's because I need to stretch more, or I know it's because I sit in front of a computer all day long, or I know it's because of that accident I had where I fell off my horse five years ago, or I injured my back, or, you know, whatever the thing is that they've pinpointed as like the source or the problem or the diagnosis of the root of their issue and that's there's nothing wrong with that but we kind of want to stay out of that story for now so very similar to how you would in traditional meditation if a thought came up if a thought came into your awareness you would just notice the thought let it drift on by without needing to connect to it, without needing to act on it, without needing to be engaged or embroiled with it in any way. So this is a way that you can work with pain without becoming embroiled in a pain cycle, right? Just noticing that it's there. And then let's come back to connecting to the environment. And as you have taken in the sights, start to notice the sounds that are around you. Start to notice what you hear in your environment. Maybe if you're indoors, you might notice the hum of a refrigerator, for example, or a fan that's on. Maybe there's an air conditioning unit or a heater going, or there may be other people in your environment. Maybe someone in another room has the television on or is listening to music or something like that begin to just pay attention to sounds that maybe you didn't realize were happening until I mentioned that. If you're outside, of course, there could be birds, there could be wildlife, it could be traffic noise. Again, this isn't about good or bad sounds. We're just starting to pay attention to what's happening around us right now. And as you do this, you may start to feel, again, some shifts happening inside your body. And if you don't, that's okay. There's no judgment here. We're just observing that experience. So paying attention to those sounds, noticing what you're noticing. Maybe there's a clock ticking. Maybe there's wind in the trees, rain falling. All kinds of things can be happening. And then coming back to your body, again, keeping your eyes open if possible. Notice what has your attention in your physical body again. Notice what sensation you're aware of. It may be exactly the same thing that you were aware of initially at the beginning of this meditation, or it may have shifted. It may be something completely different. It may be uh, that the sensation has changed itself or that you may be drawn to another area of your body. If you find at any time that your pain is intensifying, come back to that practice of visually connecting to your environment, listening to the sounds around you. And now I'd like to invite you to put your awareness on your breath. Breath is a primary pattern. It's one of the very first things you do in life. You're born and you breathe, basically. So when you're working with breath, you're working with something that is underneath all of the layers of pathways, neural habits that we've developed throughout our lifetimes. Breathing is also very connected to your autonomic nervous system. So this is the part of your nervous system that is responsible for processes in your body that are beneath your conscious control. And they're also related to how your body stores and processes stress. So stress and pain are like this, they're so connected. So as we're working with breath, we're unraveling that connection a little bit. We're calming things down and allowing your brain to get some new information that may decrease that pain. So there's no need to do anything with your breath. Simply become aware of what's happening. So where in your body do you even feel your breath? Is it down low in your belly? Or is it up high in your chest maybe? Is it very wide? very, very narrow. Maybe it's just in your throat. It might just be right here. Is it more in the front of your body or the back of your body? You do have the capacity for breath in your back as well as in the front. 
So just noticing where, where's your breath? Where is it going naturally in your body? And even just that will start to shift your breath often. So just getting a sense of how that is happening naturally without you interfering, without you trying to change it, without you know, doing your breath in a certain way. We don't need to practice any kind of yogic breath or meditation breath. We're just, just noticing, almost like a scientist observing. And when you have a really good sense of how your breath is moving in your body, I'd like to invite you to find a place in your body that feels comfortable, feels like a really good spot, feels like things are going well there. And if you've been in pain for a long time, this can be a bit of a challenge. So if you're having trouble finding a place in your body that is comfortable, just try to find a spot that's neutral. Try to find a spot that is apart from that pain pattern, a place where maybe you don't feel particularly good, but you don't feel particularly bad either. And if it's okay to do that, go ahead and let your awareness linger in that place, very similar to how you let your vision land around your space, wherever you're at. See if you can let your attention linger on this place in your body that is comfortable or neutral and just notice what happens with that again if at any time you start to feel your pain intensifying come back to connecting to your environment through your vision and through sound through listening and then noticing as you're doing this you might find that maybe there's a breath that's a little bit deeper. Maybe your breath is shifting a little bit spontaneously. Maybe there's just one breath in there that shifts a little bit. You might just start to notice that as you, as you let yourself linger in your body in this landing place, in this place of comfort, in this place of neutrality, that things start to shift kind of on their own. So coming back to that sensory experience in your body, just notice what has your attention now? What are you aware of? So just overall, having found this place of comfort or neutrality, coming back to kind of the wholeness of your experience, is it the same thing that had your attention at the beginning? Or is it a little bit different? Maybe it's the same thing, but it's shifted. Maybe you feel that and something else. Maybe you can have an expanded awareness where you're holding attention and awareness for the pain and discomfort and also something else. Maybe also a couple other things. Maybe you can be present with more of your physical experience than just that experience of discomfort that often just takes up our whole awareness when it, especially when it's been chronic pain for such a long period of time and so now I'd like to invite you if you'd like to go ahead and play with some movement so keeping your eyes open I want you just to let your gaze travel around the room until you find one of those things that you like to land on and let your head just gently shake no very slowly and nod yes while keeping your eyes on the thing that is drawing your attention. So we're playing with our eyes landing and then your head is going to move while your vision stays on something. And again, you may notice that a breath comes or that there's a, maybe a deepening to your breath and then allow your gaze to shift to something else and we're going to do that again. So let your gaze land and then you're just going to make slow movements. Now it's important that these are slow. Nodding yes and no. Okay, and then we're going to play with the opposite. So I want you to let your head, if it's okay, turn just a little bit to the left and then slide your eyes to the right. So your head is moving left 
and your eyes are going to shift a bit to the right. We're just going to hang out here for a few seconds. And then go ahead and let your head turn to the right and your eyes are going to move to the left. So a lot of our movements are related to our visual cortex because that's how we navigate. We see the world and that's connected to then how we move. So when we start to break up our habitual visual and movement patterns, that's another way of giving our brain new sensory data that can start to sort of interrupt those pain pathways in the body. And go ahead and come back to the middle. And again, I'm going to just take one more moment to ask, what has your attention now? What are you noticing? And notice I don't say, what are you feeling? Which is essentially what I'm asking, but I'm asking, what are you noticing? Noticing. because what we notice isn't always a feeling and sometimes we can get a little bit tripped up by that word so what has your attention very broad question and there's no wrong answer to that you may notice maybe a bit of lightness or a bit of calm or you may notice a tingling or a warmth or you may just any number of things. There are plenty of answers to this question. And again, there's, like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. The more that you practice this type of practice, I don't like to call it an exercise so much because it's not really so much about doing as it is about noticing. And the more you practice this awareness, the more you're going to be building capacity for noticing things that are outside of that pain experience. What happens with pain is that when you feel pain, it is a stress signal in and of itself. So there's usually some reason that pain happens and that's complex and I talk about that a lot so I'm not going to go into it super deeply here, but for some reason pain starts to happen and then that is a stress in itself and your brain then enters a little bit of a stress state. Your nervous system enters a stress state. When I say brain, I'm talking about not just what's up here, but all of your nervous system that's throughout your body. So when you're in a little bit of a stress state, painful stimulus actually seems more threatening to your brain. So it's this sort of like, we're, we're a little bit we're in pain, so we're a little bit stressed. That makes pain more intense, so now we're up here. So now we're more stressed, and we keep kind of stepping up and up and up and up. So when we're able to interrupt that and get some sensory data through to your brain that is called non-nociceptive data, meaning it's not threatening, what happens is it creates a sense of safety. It down-regulates that stress signal in your body so that the pain can then decrease. It decreases the sensitivity to pain so you're not getting quite as loud of a signal to your brain. This does take time, so often people feel quite a bit of relief initially, but it can then your pain can come back. And so if that happens, it's just that you need to continue to build in these non-nociceptive pathways, and that can take some time to make them more habitual in your body. I hope that you found this somatic meditation helpful for your chronic pain. If you did, I'd be so grateful if you'd hit the like button and definitely remember to subscribe. If you hit the bell, you'll get notified every time I release a new video. And I think, thanks so much for watching. I hope I'll see you in the next one.